So a little update on the Gabby Petito missing person. Now, obviously, murder inquiry that's happening now in the States. Um, it looks like Gabby Petito's fiance has now had an arrest warrant out for him, obviously, since her body's been found. And he's uh, basically the only person of interest, it seems like, from all the investigations that have gone on so far. Um, that's obviously tragic news in terms of conclusion. And then we also have this update courtesy of the Daily Beast that says cops who pulled over van wife couple were told fiance hit Gabby Petito, right? So if you're not familiar, there was a video that was going around of the interaction uh, between Gabby Petito, Brian Laundry, and a police officer who basically pulled them over because um, uh, a passerby had seen them arguing or maybe striking each other. When the officer got to the scene for whatever reason, he was led to believe that Gabby Petito there was the aggressor and Brian Laundry wasn't because he was very calm and very you know well mannered in terms of how he was speaking. It just didn't seem like he was the one that was getting it, even though he was the one that had the scratches, of course. So he surmised maybe Gabby Petito was just was a, a, a aggressor themselves, and of course. People People in the comments are saying, hey, um, most people that are in a violent relationship, they usually want to cover for their partner whenever a police officer gets involved or somebody was from authority. They don't obviously want to get them in trouble because they feel as if they're like, you know, being put into a situation that they can't really control, get out of. Um, so usually it's up to the police officer to recognize the signs and basically whatever happens, try and separate the both of them maybe take the guy to jail to call off whatever it may be and people are basically saying that you know maybe if it was the other way around and it was sort of a conventional he hit her situation that Gary Petito maybe still would have been alive now because he would have had you know what maybe a couple of hours maybe 24 hours to chill in the jail before he gets bailed out Gary Petito may be able to gone home and things might have changed in their relationship and whatever maybe went separate ways and she might have been still alive now again it's all what ifs and maybes but still it is kind of a sad indictment on the differences and how genders are treated whenever again they get pulled over by police and of course generally in race as well right when you look at them because you think yourself if Brian Laundrie was a black dude like if I was you know Gary Petito's fiance I'm pretty sure that regardless of what I told the police officer I would definitely get arrested and be put it back in a, a flipping police car in it that's without a shadow of a doubt but this does bring me on to a point which was mentioned in the comments below of the video that i put up before about people coming on here and feeling a little bit like i was misreporting things and not reporting things accurately i just want to say this clearly i'm sure most people are aware of this right most people should be aware of this because essentially i'm just a guy with a shitty macbook a webcam a pretty decent microphone plugged into a focus right you know talking to you via the internet right i'm no one i'm a nobody i work a normal nine to five i go out in the evenings i go to the gym in the mornings i shit i sleep same as you guys do nothing different i'm just talking out my ass this podcast for the most part is an opportunity for me to kind of make myself or yeah to sort of like help me in my ability to kind of make myself sane or to stop me from going mad because i don't have many friends and i don't really have an opportunity to kind of offload most of these things i think about and speak about so this is the best way to me to do so right to speak directly into this microphone into a camera and obviously have you guys listen to it have you listen to it via podcast app watching it on youtube whatever it may be i'm just reporting on what i see at the time without research on the news right when i'm reading it and i'm obviously giving you my opinion off the cuff as i'm talking to you now and maybe stuff that i've kind of ruminated over the last couple of days and so but that's it I'm not a resource for information or stone cold facts or whatnot. If you want that, you go to the news sources, you read the plethora of articles that exist out there, you break down videos, there's people on YouTube doing really in-depth studies of what they call them internet sleuths who have been able to kind of help and assist the police in basically finding, unfortunately, where the body might have been located and maybe kind of pointing towards the fact that it might allegedly be the fiancé who was responsible for her death. There's all these amazing people that are really great resources for information you should be going to. Not me. I'm not an information resource. I'm an entertainment resource. I'm a cultural critic, right? I mean, art, whatever it may be. Yeah? I kind of sometimes dabble some of my art and the stuff that I produce on this channel as well. But for the most part, this is a cultural commentary podcast. Me just commentating on things that happen in the culture and giving my two cents on it. That's it. And also, it's pretty, I think idiotic to kind of sit there wherever you may be around the world and think just because I have the same skin tone as you that somehow I'm going to share the same views. Number one, I'm from a completely different country. I'm from a completely different background. I was raised a completely different way. I have loads of different influences that I've kind of grown up among. Just because you share the same skin tone as somebody doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have the same views in life, let alone the same interests, right? There are things I'm interested in that most of my friends that look like me or where are, are from where I'm from are not into. 
I'm really into heavy metal. I don't really talk about it here, but I've been to Downloads Festival a couple of times in my life. I go to, you know, metal gigs a lot. I've been going to them since I was, what, 18 years old. That's something I do a lot. I like to do. I don't necessarily see a lot of people there look like that look like me, but I wouldn't just assume because that they're there and they look like me that they'd also be into the bands I was into because it's just all personal preference sort of stuff. And I interpret the stuff the way I interpret it through my experiences and whatever I've kind of seen and grown up with. And then I obviously relate that on the podcast and that's all I try to do. That's all. I don't try to be super misinformation information because that's not me and I'm not really interested in doing that sort of stuff. I want to, you know, um, provide you with as much to date stuff that's happening in the culture now and just give you my take that's it i'm sure most of you are doing that you're only coming to hear my take and situation not actually coming to hear the actual facts of the matter because again i'm just a dude but to have people kind of you know here going at me because of that is just insanely weird in my in, in my opinion and again i understand it i get the frustration if i don't share your opinion someone looks like you it can be a little bit annoying to hear somebody kind of go against the grain and be a little bit quote controversial i don't try and be that i'm just an independent thinker i've always have been i never follow the trends i never follow the group think i try and kind of attack things at a different angle and that's all i try and do and try and express things as clearly and articulately as I can from my own point of view, not from somebody else's, just my own. I could read an article here and not agree with what's being said, but I could also understand where the person's coming from. And hopefully you guys can do the same thing with me. And that's it. And if you can't, fair play, no problem. But I'm not here to try and appease anybody because we happen to share the same skin tone or the same racial background and stuff. It's just insanely naive and pretty simple minded to think that way. But again, I understand what you're thinking that way, but don't come to me expecting me to be flipping the oracle of news and people providing you with hard hitting facts and stories. That's just not what I'm going to do. It never is. But anyway. Let's get back to the story. So, courtesy of Daily Beast, cops who pulled over a van life couple were told fiance hit Gabby Petito. It says the following police officers in Moa, Utah, responding to reports of a dispute between the doomed van life couple, Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry, who is now a person of interest in the homicide, were told by a dispatch that Laundry, the Brian, the doomed fiance, had reportedly hit Petito during the August 11th argument new release audio reveals. Um, the reporting party states a male hit a female the police dispatch says over the radio domestic he got into a white white Ford transit van has a black ladder on the back Florida plate the female got hit they both the male and the female got into the van and headed north so clearly the police officer that went to go into engage and pull them over knew that the male had been the aggressor which again goes to show if anything a lot of these things that occur obviously bad timing bad luck wrong place wrong time but it also just goes to show the negligence and the mistakes that just happen in just day-to-day -day life. But unfortunately, because it's cops and they're having to deal with people, the consequences are far more extreme, right? Someone could legitimately lose their life, right? Lose a limb, have a life debilitating industry, in the injury, wherever it may be. So the cost of making a mistake at that level are far higher. But it also needs to be said that it's quite clear, especially in America, there's a clear difference between how you're treated if you're white, between how if you're from a certain minority. It just is clear. And we know for a fact, if this was maybe, maybe it's different. If it was two black people, two Hispanic people, two Latino people, um, I don't really, I wouldn't necessarily say they maybe would have got taken to jail just to call off. I don't think so. But for sure, if the dude was black, even if he was an athlete, it doesn't matter for sure they would have definitely took him to jail just to call him down to question him it would have been embarrassing would have come out oh my god you hit your wife da, 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 wife to be cool but at least she would have still been alive right we can categorically say that most likely if that would happen it would still be alive because you know many hours after the fact that's when allegedly she went missing and then of course then the, her body was found so quite clearly whatever argument that they had at that point might have affected how they interacted with each other later down the line because if you know anything about toxic relationships between men and women it was just in people in general um when you're in a relationship like that it doesn't necessarily it's very rare that your arguments just stop out of the blue they usually continue on for hours on end until somebody obviously decides to kind of walk away and be the bigger person but they do kind of kind of they do tend to kind of roll on roll on roll on and especially if you got violent at that point there is no real end to where that can go to the tapes obtained by fox 13 salt lake city helps paint a fuller picture of the narrative laid out in the incident report filed by one of the cops after the encounter which somehow ended the police viewing petito 22 as the aggressor in this previously released 911 shortly before the officers were dispatched a witness tells the operator we drove by him a gentleman was slapping the girl they ran up and down the sidewalk they proceeded to hit her hopped in a car and they drove off so that's what it goes to show 
again, apart from being the prejudice involved in police officers in the States or in general, there is definitely a lack of just good police officers. They just shit their job. Like stone coldly bad at what they do. Quite clearly, we see them. We see many mistakes, many errors along the way where they just keep fucking up and doing really shitty things that lead to people essentially, you know, it leads to people kind of losing their life over the back of it. Or, you know, again, like, you know, maybe getting severely injured or having life altering injury, whatever it may be. It happens all the time at the hands of police, especially police in America for the most part. And this should be really one of the stories of the day, not off the back of, oh, yeah, we're not underrepresented communities are not being represented. Cool. But there is clearly an issue here with the ability to police and to resolve in incidents and to be able to assess the danger and able to you know understand what's happening because i'd imagine a lot of police officers have a lot of experience with dealing with domestic disputes even though they they shouldn't be dealing with that sort of stuff right they should be trying to hunt murderers rapists and all this sort of stuff and kidney fillers right they should be trying to do that but i would imagine a lot of their day-to-day -day is just done conflict resolutions right even in the workplace or at home they're constantly going through these kind of things and you should be able to tell when somebody is in a right relationship when they're trying to cover the back of their fiance, when maybe it's not as it seems or what you're seeing there, you should be able to say, you should be able to discern it with all those years of experience. If you know, people, police officers always say, I've got 20 years of experience, I've never seen so-and-so. You should be able to know when a situation isn't what exactly appears on the eye or what you or what they're trying to present to you in person. You should be able to see. <laughs> Um, laundry and Pet laundry Petito's 23 year old fiance inexplicably returned home to Florida without Petito two weeks later in the report a copy of which the Daily Beast required um, uh, got officer Eric Pratt wrote it appeared that a male and a female had left the scene traveling north I believe the report the male had been observed to be assaulting a female I wonder if he's going to get any charges or he's going to be reprimanded in his job because he failed right really badly like legitimately failed at his job this officer um, Eric Pratt but after interviewing Petito and Laundry, as well as connecting the, uh, contacting the witnesses, the called 911 in the first place, Pratt came to a different conclusion. Petito and Laundry had some sort of argument. He wrote, um, tried to create distance by telling Petito to walk down and calm down. He says, however, Petito didn't want to be separated, began slapping him. The report continues. The documents claims Laundry grabbed Petito by the face and pushed her back as she pressed upon him and the van. The fight erupted over the phone, according to the report. More likely than not, that's probably what ended up letting her to her death. I'd imagine it's very unlikely for a dude to just suddenly wake up and want to kill his wife especially that young i'd imagine he had a very toxic relationship very dangerous relationship in that regard maybe very violent but he probably especially out in a nature park you know in the middle of nowhere loads of hard sharp objects around they get into some sort of argument he pushes her back she falls over hits her head like a movie somewhere i'd imagine i don't know now again what happens after the fact if it's a mistake or it's an error cool but what happens after the fact is what makes you a sicker right deciding to pull the body put it in the back try and bury it, all this sort of mad stuff for somebody that you allegedly love is wild and then to come back home and refuse to talk to the police and get representation straight away and then go for a hike and disappear is nuts right so quite clearly he's guilty <laughs> quite clearly but for sure if the officer would have stepped in at that time that he had interaction god damn it man um, no one reported that the male struck the female. Both the female and the male reported they were in love um, and engaged to be married and desperately didn't wish to anyone to see the charge with a crime, says Pratt's um, wire trap, write up, sorry, which goes on to assert that Laundry did not exhibit any indicators that he may be the victim of bad boyfriend syndrome even though he had scratches on his face and stuff. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Um, and that he was assessed to be at low risk of danger and harass as a result of proximity. You are never going to see that ever written for an IC3 male, ever for black male. Brown mistake, never assess that low risk of danger or harm as rose of proximity to Petito. Imagine blonde hair, blue eyed girl, as pretty as she is, and I'm standing next to her and I'm going to be proven as the non aggressor. Really? Never happening. In a body cam video of the encounter later released by authorities, the second officer had been seen telling Petito that he has decided not to cite for a domestic violence battery. He says it was only going to be a class D misdemeanor. However, the domestic violence portion of the enhances it, makes it a life major pain in the butt, especially your 22, right? So he tried to help him out, which is understandable, but. Um, police, Petito told police officer that she was frightened that Laundry was going to leave her behind in Moab. According to the incident report, they both suffered from extreme anxiety. The two said in India, the responding officers declared the incident to be a mental and emotional health break rather than a domestic dis assault. I am separating you tonight. The officer detailing Petito says, I want you guys to be tonight. I want you guys to go. 
I want you guys both to be tonight away from each other, relax and breathe. I understand this can feel like a nightmare, but you're going to have golden flower out on top of it. So I'm pretty sure after it, they probably just met up again. Um, cops released the van um, to Petito, who illegally owned the van, and arranged a motor room for laundry. Officers told Petito where she could take a shower for four or five bucks. One of them said laundry as he drove him to the motel. I told her to go to the shower because she seems to a lot, a lot like my wife, and uh, and these things really worked for my wife, and it was what gets her stressed out to take a long hot shower the footage concludes with officer checking laundry into a local motor room and shaking his hand as he says goodbye most likely then they met after the fact and the rest is history petition laundry duh, 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 duh. and then of course the update here is that he's been formally charged it says the federal court has issued this arrest warrant um for laundry um, no it's been officially arrest warrant's been put out it's not been charged according to the bureau of investigation the warrant is issued on wednesday um issued a warrant for just for brian christopher laundry duh, 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 duh. Following the death of Mr. Petito, Mr. Laundry, who has been to Petito's fiance, is still missing. Police have been searching for him in the Calvert um, Carlton Nature Reserve in Sarsosta, Florida. Specifically, Laundry has been charged with fraudulently using someone else's debit card from over the 3rd of August to the 1st of September, spending with drawing 1000 or more. He has not at this point been charged with Petito's homicide, but he has been possession of interest in the missing person's case. Interest. So they can't charge him for the homicide yet because I guess the dna and evidence doesn't point to it because maybe his prints and stuff isn't on file i don't know um i guess so maybe so they had to get him on this him using the bank details or the bank card that's delivered to the petito uh, between the times that she obviously over the, after the time she had of course passed away which i'm sure if he's lawyers probably be able to explain because they were together in a relationship and so on not. but it is looking really really bad you know he leaves his parents home he doesn't tell them where he's going more likely than not he obviously did the crime and he's definitely going to be brought to justice but again man like a sad situation all in all again i wasn't a fan of people using as opportunity to kind of denigrate the death of one girl to bring attention to another i think you can talk about two things at the same time but do it with tact uh do it without being a a bit of a prick basically and you could also use it and do it as opportunity to shine the platform or shine a light on people from disadvantage or unrepresented communities not being you know put on the put on the flipping main news because they're not blonde with blue eyes and do it on your platform and i see people doing it. i've seen some people doing it especially on twitter recently i've seen people turning their social media feeds into basically ad hoc sort of missing person platforms where they'd be able to share news of people who have been unreported and missing for a long period of time because they're from you know minority community people are maybe not that bothered about them and little by little some resolutions have been found some tragic more than others but it's good to see people taking active steps to change things as opposed to just pointing and saying to people oh you should be talking about her because this person hasn't been talked about it's like no don't denigrate one death to bring light on the other both families are suffering let's just use the opportunity to shine light on everybody that's missing especially during these bleak moments in time in history going through a pandemic we should be a little more empathetic sympathetic to whatever people are going through because we're all struggling in our own way regardless of what we are in terms of our socioeconomic level we're all kind of struggling to get back on our feet and get acclimatized with whatever this new world is that we're living in at the moment we still don't seem to be able to shake it it's like a bad hangover the pandemic is not over still people are still dying cases are still erupting in certain places you look at what's going on in new zealand and australia you know my heart goes out to people that live in those kind of countries absolutely you know, it's absolutely t tyrannical in terms of how they're being treated their restrictions and freedom you know being placed in the, everywhere in the terms of life they're going through so i don't know man i wish people to just be a little bit more a little bit nicer to each other i guess in the situations isn't it and because this turned into a really toxic situation really really quickly i understand what she looks like and the undevoted attention they gave to it i get it that'll make you angry but let's just relax in it let's just relax a little bit but yeah um that's the conclusion arrest warrant out for brian laundry he probably did it um if he didn't do it he's gonna have one hell of a time to try and convince people he didn't do it because more likely not in the situations you know, more likely than not, it's a somebody as close to, to you that's going to be able to exact such level of fucking viciousness and pain and violence to you that will eventually lead to your death. And it is what it is. And force of feeling because I have to go with Tito's, her and her family, and hopefully they can put a close the situation. Brian Laundry's found, and, you know, we can go ahead and kind of close this book as soon as possible and let people move on and try and recover and restore whatever life they have left now at the moment. But, you know, it's tragic all around. It's tragic all around.